Hello, I'm Nancy Carrier, Partner Enablement Manager at Acumatica. Today we'll be discussing fixed assets in Acumatica. From the main menu, you can access the fixed assets workspace. To see the list of all current fixed assets, you just click on fixed assets. In Acumatica, you can create a fixed asset even if you haven't received a bill for it. Later, when the bill is received, you can link the fixed asset to a vendor bill or to multiple vendor bills. Or you can do the reverse. You can enter a vendor bill and easily convert the purchase to a fixed asset. Let's look at how a fixed asset is tracked in Acumatica. Acumatica makes it easy to find everything pertaining to a particular fixed asset because everything's contained on one page. The tabs across the middle of the page let you navigate to different types of information about the fixed asset. On the general settings tab right at the top is the asset class. The asset class defines the default values for a particular type of assets. In this example, it's defining the default values for equipment and machinery. By clicking the pencil at the end of the field, we can see how you set up those default values. The asset type is just as you would expect, machinery and equipment. These are assets that we want to depreciate, so the depreciate field is checked. And we've set a useful life to default to 10 years. On the depreciation settings tab, you specify the depreciation method for this type of fixed asset. In this example, you can see we're using straight line. Notice the far left column for books. You can record depreciation in different ways in as many different books as you want, but only one book can post to the GL. The asset class makes it quick and easy to create a new fixed asset. As soon as you select the asset class, all the default values populate the fixed asset. Keep in mind these are default values. You can always overwrite them when creating a new fixed asset. To the right, we have tracking information. Acumatica makes it easy to move and track assets. Anytime the value of branch or floor, room, department, etc. Anytime those change, the changes are logged over here on the location history tab. So let's say I move this into a specific building such as our headquarters. When I save it, I'm able to see that change on my location history tab. On the balance tab, you can get a quick overview of the financial status of the asset. From here, you can see things like the original acquisition cost, the current basis, accumulated depreciation, and net value. The depreciation history tab shows how much depreciation has been calculated and how much depreciation has actually been recorded per financial period. In this example, we've both calculated and recorded $833.34 monthly, and we've recorded it through November of 2018. The Transaction History tab lets you view any transaction involving this asset. These top two lines relate to the purchasing of this fixed asset, but most transactions, as you can see, let me make this a little bit easier to look at. You can see most of our transactions are due to depreciation being recorded. To the right, you'll see reference number and batch number. These columns allow for drill down to the actual fixed asset transactions. If I go back to my fixed assets workspace, you can see we have a long list of out-of-the-box fixed asset reports, such as this fixed assets balance. So instead of navigating to the balance tab for each fixed asset, you can run a report like this to see balance information across all fixed assets. Today, 
we reviewed fixed assets in Acumatica. If you would like more information, please visit acumatica.com.